I think in the handout they're alphabetical, but that's the best. Um, the Cannabis Cultural Association is on the East Coast. Uh, Minority Cannabis Business Association is interesting. There's um, maybe some of you have heard of the NCIA, the National Cannabis Industry Association. So um, a group like uh, MCBA was formed kind of to have a, a more space for people of color in the industry. And um, Supernova, Amber's here today. Um, the Hood Incubator, which uh, and, and Oak Deck work pretty closely together. And, and then I also included um, Black Lives Matter and Critical Resistance as a few examples um, that we really need to um, branch out um, by supporting other groups that are doing similar work. Maybe they're not focused on cannabis, but um, for instance, Black Lives Matter, I mean, they understand that black growers are probably treated differently than white growers in this industry. Uh, and what we have in common for sure is um, that we're all working to end mass incarceration. So just food for thought, um, coalition building, and, and mostly just showing support um, to groups that are doing similar work. So. Um, yeah, uh, Oak Deck, I think we'll be hearing more about on the next panel, but we're going to touch on it briefly now. And you'll hear more about Danielle, specifically. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Danielle Barber. Uh, obviously, we have the same name. We actually, fun fact, we actually have the same first and middle name. It's a good thing we don't have yeah, it's a good thing we don't have same last name. Um, but uh, just a brief introduction about myself. Um, I've been with Harborside for almost 10 years, 10 years uh, in May, and I've worked in various uh, roles in the front of house. So I've done from sales associate, sales manager, I worked in the Ambas where we're greeting everybody, um, and, and now my, my focus has been uh, at Harborside, the patient services, so making sure that the patient experience is amazing. Uh, more recently, I've got involved with Oak Deck, and Oak Deck stands for Oakland Diversity and Equity Cannabis Coalition. And mainly what we've been working on is working with the city of Oakland and working with the city council members in uh, devising a real working equity program. And as Danielle touched on, um, they have been working on, you know, uh, basically permitting uh, the rest of the supply chain for the cannabis industry. Um, so the M MCRSA, uh, McCursa, as I just like to refer to it as, is basically the state um, permitting all of these different cannabis businesses um, that have been operating technically illegally, and the state has kind of just, you know, turned a blind eye, if you will. And even more so in Oakland, um, we have our Measure Z and our Category Z cannabis businesses. Um, and so with what Oak Deck is doing, and along with the Hood Incubator, Supernova Women, um, and uh, different organizations, we're trying to work with them in making sure that the permit process makes sense, that specifically that equity program, which is awesome, as Daniel touched on, um, actually does include all the people that we're trying to include. And mainly with the program, with the equity program, initially Desley Brooks um, proposed that we focus on these six uh, police beats that were mainly all in East Oakland, District 6, District 7, um, and not spreading it out amongst the other areas in Oakland. And we all know that, granted, yeah, East Oakland is huge and it's definitely um, an area that needs to be focused on. We also have West Oakland, we have other parts of East Oakland, Fruitvale District, all those other areas that weren't touched on. And so we went from six proposed beats um, to now 19, which uh, the new uh, race and equity director proposed. So now we have 19 and, and we're going to all be voting on that March 7th. So if you guys are members of Oakland um, or residents of Oakland, you guys should come out to the city council. It's March 7th. I think it's six to five or six, I think. One of those. But you can see that, uh, you know, on the on the website. But definitely make sure you, you come out if you guys are residents. And you guys should come out too and just support. Um, but that's, you know, mainly what I've been doing. Um, we're, we're working on different um, actions in addition to that. Obviously, we're trying to help people get permits. We're trying to make sure that we 
tell people about these permits and what's going on in, in the city of Oakland. But in addition to that, what OPDEC is, is a group of different organizations. And so we all collectively have those resources to, to also help those people who, who potentially get those permits to also move forward with training and mentoring. That's also what's proposed in uh, for the city of Oakland. So we're just trying to make sure that all those resources are available because, you know, you can give somebody a permit, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to run a successful business, especially in the cannabis industry. You know, a lot of people think you got all this money, you can jump in it and it's going to be easy peasy. And that's not the case. You know, um, the retail in the cannabis industry is not the same kind of retail in a regular in a regular retail setting. You know, and so it's, it's important to understand that we all need to make sure that we're connecting with these people, we're educating them, um, and you know, we're just making sure that we provide those uh, resources to them. So, I guess I'll, thank you, and you'll, you'll have more time. Yeah, and I'll take can ask questions uh, during the panel. Yeah. Okay. If you stand up here, just like, oh, careful, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, and um, Amber, would you be willing to talk about Supernova Women also? And um, well, I think we still have some time for questions, uh, anything about um, the, the comments so far. Um, and Amber, amazing activist and uh, businesswoman uh, and founded Supernova Women. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Amber Center. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Supernova Women, along with Nina Parks and Sun Sunshine and Lencho. Um, I'm also the executive director of Supernova. Um, <clears throat> what we do uh, is uh, we've created a space uh, for women of color and cannabis, also um, people of color and cannabis. Uh, and uh, we empower these people to become self-sufficient shareholders uh, in the cannabis industry, so to run their own businesses um, <clears throat> and uh, take a ownership stake in, the, in their businesses. And uh, we do that through advocacy and education and networking. So we host a number of events. Uh, we've done a few events here in California. We've held some workshops here in Oakland. Uh, we've done an event in Boston. And uh, we're, we're taking a bit more of a, a national focus and look at things versus um, just here in, um, in the Bay. But we are based in the Bay, so um, a lot of our work gets done here. And uh, yeah, that's it, thank you. You were talking about the Women's March, and I know that there's the event, A Day Without Women, coming up this next Wednesday. Do you know if there are any oh. protests or anything going on? I don't. Does anybody know about the day of protests on, did you say Wednesday? Wednesday. It's a day without women where, I mean, it's... Oh, a day without women. Yeah. Okay. Where we're not supposed to go to work, which oh. is not too bad, but would be nice to have a gathering place. Um, do you know about that? I just say, yeah, you, you can avoid working for pay or unpaid work. Mm. We can, and, if, and avoid spending money or shopping, and then, and then I think it's also wear red. Maybe it's all wear red. 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 And do you know what's a good place to find information about that? I think it's if you go to Women's March or Okay, thank you. So there's going to be a rally from, I think it starts at 5 p.m. on a day without women on Wednesday at, right here um, at the, right in front of Oakland City Hall. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's probably rallies in most uh, bigger cities yep. then. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Know how to deal with Jeff Sessions kind of things? that would be good to give support to for that? Yeah, I had him in my talk and took it out. Um, I just wonder if maybe he'll be removed soon. Um, does anybody know what would? Um, yeah, it's hard to know what to do about them. Of uh, course, writing to the senators and congressmen. Yes. Well, there's a WhiteHouse.gov petition right now as well that was just posted asking Congress uh, to to allow states to choose um, how they want to deal with the cannabis issue. So for states' rights, so I would recommend signing that as well. Yeah, for sure. Petitions and. Um, 
any kind of events like a rally and I, I think my personal approach has been to focus on the local that's why I was so grateful for this event um, to just really focus on what we've got going on around here but we have the luxury of that because we're in the Bay Area uh, you know in other states there's still so much work to be done and and that's why I wanted I was hoping today to focus on you know how can we really help get people's sentences reduced and get people out um, so I think that that's a way that you know it doesn't directly um, work against sessions but um, it's directly helping people Yeah, and you know, Drug Policy Alliance had promised to have a, a website specifically walking people through it um, that I haven't seen yet. Ellen, do you know? Yeah, they do. It's um, drugpolicy.org slash prop 64 Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, I'm trying to find that. They have a lot of information. There have been some uh, events where you sit down and swear how to run away. Actually, um, people can write their phone on too. We have some information up, and I can. DPA is helping people work with public defenders, and also a lot of our lawyers at Cal Normal uh, know the process. There are some things you can do on your own, but there are some things you should look at maybe before you do that. Thank you, Ellen. Um, yeah, and um, there, you know, that's one time where I'm grateful for some of the bigger cannabis companies. A few of them, for instance, Marley Natural has done an expungement workshop. So I think that um, it really comes down to that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a small number of people can really make a exponential difference by um, giving it a couple hours uh, for an event. Um, because if they help those people get their records expunged, then that spreads. Um, so that's that's one thing to look out for is expungement workshops. Any organizations or companies that are doing that. And I think um, you know we can add to this throughout the day of during the next panel. Um, any other questions? Uh, Mickey first, and then Jan. Okay. Well, I just wanted to add that. Oh, please, yes, Mickey. In Prop 64, a couple other social justice components are that it allows people who have felony convictions to be a part of the industry. That That's not going to prevent them from getting involved in the industry. So that, that's one thing that the DPA insisted on should be in the initiative. And then there's also a fund, a part of the revenues, the tax revenues that will be um, collected, assuming that the industry can go forward and is not crushed by the federal government or anything. <coughs> uh, from starting at $10 million to $50 million a year directed to help uh, communities disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. And so that, that can be used for all kinds of different things and hopefully directed towards nonprofit work that, that's helping people to get back and re-enter society or otherwise get into the industry as well. I mean, it's pretty open how it's going to be. So I really encourage people, if you're interested, to get involved in the process now because the regulations have not been totally set yet. And they want your input. And Lori Ajax, the, the woman in charge of this whole program, is, is doing a really uh, a good job of outreach to people and, and is open. And now they're also um, forming an advisory committee and people are submitting applications. If you're interested in being a part of that, a citizen advisory committee, you might want to check into that at the uh, Bureau of Medical Cannabis Regulations website. Yeah, thank you, Mickey. Um, Mickey Norris and uh, her husband, Chris Conrad, have worked on Prop 215 and pretty much any legislation that was proposed that needed volunteers and campaigning and for sure Prop 64, he did so much work for it and there's a lot of intricacies um, that really help people in there. So thank you for, for pointing that out, that um, it allows people to work in the industry if they've had a an That's record. Un unlike the medical law, the medical marijuana, they have a provision in there that says 
that uh, they, they will do criminal background checks and do not want people with you know, criminal records. But Prop 64 wanted, that was one thing they wanted to correct. To enable, because that, I mean, people who have a criminal record are often the ones who have the best resumes for this industry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Jan? Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to say that um, I think the talk and, and exploring the you know cannabis in the world of social justice and vice versa and I'd like to encourage you or others here who might be open to it to consider speaking or applying to speak at the white privilege conference um, which is a really powerful event if anybody's interested in attending and wanting to really up your <laughs> your exposure and information and self-processing around um, white privilege but for someone to go and speak to this topic there which is so much about social justice um, and also then educate people as well about cannabis, I think would be a really great way to get this message to a wider audience. Do you know when it is? I don't, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, that's now okay. that I can't be paid to go, I'm not um, quite so sure. But. Yeah, thank you, yeah, and it, it doesn't have to be a question if there's something you want to share, for sure. Yeah. We still have a few minutes, and if not, then I will um, pass the mic so we can transition to the, the business panel. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.